We have put the future of television on the American agenda again tonight. As we've tried to illustrate this week, television is in the process of revolutionary change. Look at it this way. Sociologists and other educators argue that spending too much time sitting in front of the television is to risk stunting one's intellectual growth and imagination. So what happens in the future when it may be absolutely necessary to watch a lot of TV in order to get certain things done? Once again, our agenda reporter is Jeff Greenfield. If you want to get the album, you simply They call it the, the information superhighway, the coming the network guide, of two-way communications like that will line. soon carry a limitless flow of entertainment and information to and from the home for a price. But will this superhighway go here to a community like West Oakland that already lacks so much of what most of us take for granted? They cannot get the basic government sources and services. Um, they don't get supermarkets. They don't have ATMs. So what will happen in these neighborhoods where families cannot afford the link to the information highway? Remember, this is not about free HBO or sports channel, but about access to the way America will be learning and working in the coming years. That technology will not be available, and we're going to create even more of a social stratification in this country. It's a concern that goes right to the top. Poor kids today aren't uh, given the money to buy books, but they're given access to the public library system, and we can give all Americans access to digital libraries. But that's not something the major corporate players are going to put at the top of their agendas as one leader in the cable TV industry candidly recognizes. Nobody wants to go out and, and invent something and invest hundreds of millions of dollars of risk capital for the public interest, you know? I mean, one would be fired as a, an executive of a profit-making company if you took that stance. This emphasis on profit has some in Congress worried that the coming information superhighway may be dominated by a handful of big boys. We have to afford real protections uh, against the worst instincts of uh, monopolists. Uh, the first game that one of these telephone companies might want to put on their wire is Pac-Man, where they just gobble up all the cable companies in their own region. This issue, who will control the information highway, is not just about cost. It goes to what some see as the key question about two-way communications. How are we going to let citizens uh, participate in the communications revolution? Are they going to continue to be recipients of sort of a one-way broadcast-like medium in which they're very passive, or will there be more real interactivity and more real participation? Right now, for example, millions of computer literate Americans are participating in thousands of electronic communities through services like Prodigy, America Online, the Internet, they're playing games with each other. They're exchanging opinions on books. They're fantasizing about sex. They're also searching for their birth parents, and they're finding allies for their political causes. When the interactive power of today's computer is put inside tomorrow's television set, and when it becomes as easy to access as a few flicks on a remote control, the impact could be literally revolutionary. This type of medium could enable uh, a Jeffersonian uh, revolution in our civic life by empowering individuals and communities to communicate with each other, to take action. But a question, if we're all communicating with each other, what happens to the traditional model of broadcasting, the once dominant major networks? ABC's Bob Iger says, don't blow taps just yet. We're very comfortable for the consumer. We are there, we're there all the time, and we're there in a very regular, orderly fashion. And I believe that in a world in which there is massive choice, there's still going to be a need on the part of the consumer for someone else to create an order. The past teaches us that the present is never very good at predicting the future. But what does seem safe to predict is that it will soon be possible to live much more of your life through the tube than it is right now. Whether that picture of the future excites or depresses you is your call. Jeff Greenfield, ABC News, New York.